bro, we need to talk. Specifically, we need to talk about differential operators, the ones we studied back in vector calculus. So recall the del operator defined as partial by partial x, x cap, plus partial by partial y, y cap in the two-dimensional case. So turns out there's a very nice way to define its counterpart in the complex realm as del being the operator defined as partial by partial x plus i times partial by partial y. And we can define a conjugate operator del bar as partial by partial x minus i times partial by partial y as well. <laughs> and the product of these two operators gives us the squared modulus, sort of squared modulus of this operator, which we of course write as just del squared. And this gives us del squared, partial squared by partial x squared, plus partial squared by partial y squared, which is the familiar Laplacian operator. You gotta admit that's cool, but why is it relevant? Well, recall that we can write z as its real part x plus i times its imaginary part y and z bar as x minus i times y. We can treat z and z bar as functions of x and y, or we could solve these two equations for x and y and express x and y in terms of z and z bar. So you get this structure for x, and y would be z minus z bar divided by 2 times i, right? So in this case, we're actually treating x and y as functions of z and z bar. And what does this mean for the del operator in complex analysis? So del is partial by partial x, plus i times partial by partial y. So using the multivariable chain rule in operator form, because x is a function of both z and z bar, we have for the real part of this operator, so-called real part anyway, we have partial z by x partial by partial z plus partial z bar by partial x partial by partial z bar, plus for the so-called imaginary part, we have a corresponding structure, partial z bar by partial y, partial by partial z, plus the same thing for the complex conjugate of z. Okay, cool, let me just get myself some writing space over there. And here we go. Okay, cool. Now, what do these derivatives even mean? Well, take z, x plus i times y, then this implies that partial z by partial x just equals 1, whereas partial z by partial y equals i, and partial z bar by partial x also equals 1, whereas partial z by partial z bar by partial y, that is, equals negative i. So plugging in these results, we have del equal to partial by partial z plus plus partial by partial z bar plus i times partial z by partial y is just i. So we have partial by partial z times i minus i times partial by partial z bar. Okay, so multiplying out the i's, that should give us i squared. So that's a negative sign here and a positive sign here. So we see that these two things cancel out. And this implies that the del operator is actually twice the operator partial by partial z bar, which is pretty cool. And by the same token, we have del bar being defined as twice of partial by partial z. Now, what happens if we apply these operators to a function f of z that's analytic? Well, partial f by partial z bar is one half of del f. And del f is partial f by partial x plus i times partial f by partial y. So expanding in terms of the real and imaginary parts, we have one half of partial u by partial x plus i times partial v by partial x plus i times partial u by partial y plus i times partial v by partial y. So let me just group together the real and imaginary parts. I have one half of partial u by partial x. i times i is i squared, which is negative one, partial v by partial y plus i times partial u by partial y 
plus partial v times partial x. Now, because f is analytic, that means it satisfies the Cauchy-Riemann equations. So this thing here is equal to partial u by partial x, and they cancel out. And this thing here equals negative partial u by partial y, so they cancel out as well which implies that partial f by partial z bar is supposed to be zero for all analytic functions. And that makes perfect sense because if a function f were somehow a function of z bar, then taking the derivative means that we have to take the derivative of z bar itself, and z bar is not a differentiable function. So yeah, this makes sense and expresses that idea in a concrete manner. And in terms of the del operator, this means that del f is supposed to be zero. That's okay-ish, but it gets more interesting once you apply del bar to this equation. So what happens then? Well, del bar of zero is just zero, whereas del bar and del applied together give you the Laplacian. So the, the Laplacian of f equals zero. And this implies that the Laplacian of u plus i times the Laplacian of v equals zero equating the real and imaginary parts on both sides gives us Laplacian u equal to zero and Laplacian v equal to zero. So that means the real and imaginary parts of a, of a holomorphic function f are both solutions to the Laplace equation, which is pretty cool. The function v here is called the harmonic conjugate of the function u. And Given a function u, and by that I mean any function that satisfies the Laplace equation, we can determine the harmonic conjugate and construct a holomorphic function f equal to u plus iv. And how exactly do we do that? Well, we use the CR equations because we want to construct a holomorphic function. So given u means that we're given we're pretty much given partial u by partial x and partial u by partial y. And this thing here equals partial v by partial y, and this thing here equals negative partial v by partial x. So you have a couple of partial differential equations that you can solve for v, but that means v is determined up to adding a constant. And hence you get a holomorphic function f equal to u plus i times v. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Thank you. See you next time.